You're listening to the Cat Breeder Sensei Says Podcast. In this episode, we're going to really break down the expenses and any required budget or reserves that you're going to need as a pedigree cat breeder. So we're going to talk about money. But before we get into that, let's listen to this short message. Do you want to learn how to become a successful breeder of pedigree cats? Now you can. For the first time ever, enroll in an online training course that takes you step-by-step through everything you need to know to get on the right track. Visit catbreedersensei.com to sign up today and use code PODCAST21 to get $25 off. Okay, we're going to talk about expenses and then budget and reserves in two different sections. So first is the expenses section. So what are the expenses that you can realistically expect, let's say for the first year only, when you're just starting out and you're becoming a brand new pedigree cat breeder, of whatever breed, you know, of your choice. We're not talking about any specific breed here. And before we continue, let me make this really quick disclaimer that everything that I'm sharing with you in this podcast is some of it's factual, but some of it can also be based on opinion or my personal experience. So don't take this as the Bible, okay? Your, your expenses are going to be different than mine. This is kind of just an, an estimate of what you can expect in real life. Give or take, I don't know, a few thousand dollars. It's not going to be that far off. So when you're starting out, of course, you're going to need to acquire your cats for breeding. Some people start out with one male and one female. Some people go all in and get a sire and they get two or three queens. No matter what that ratio looks like for you, those are gonna be the biggest expense is acquiring your breeding cats. Of course, you wanna take your time, research your breeders and make the best decisions that you possibly can when you're choosing your cats that are going to be used in your breeding program. So don't go out and just find a cute picture and buy the kitten. Get some foundational knowledge about how to choose a kitten for your breeding program. That's a different podcast, but back to the cost of acquiring the cats for breeding. They're not cheap. In fact, they're quite expensive. And I like to go by this old adage that says, cheap is never good and good is never cheap. So don't look for the cheapest breeding cats. That's probably not going to come with a lot of support or a lot of backing um, to help you get started or if you have questions about those cats, you know. So I'm not saying that go out and look for an expensive cat. That's not what I'm saying either, but just, you know, be real mindful. Be careful about who you buy your breeding cats from. So I put an average on the cost of a breeding cat of $5,000 each cat. That's as of February 2023. Now that could vary depending on the breed you're working with, the breeder that you're working with, and whether or not you're importing the cat from another country if you have additional expenses for getting the cat here. So it's all going to be dependent on, you know, those different things. But nevertheless, let's say the average is $5,000 per cat. So however many cats, you know, 5,000 times however many cats that you're going to buy. Um, You need a minimum of two, and you need a queen, and you need a sire, unless, of course, you have someone that has agreed to let you use their sire for stud service. It's not real common in the United States to find someone who will let you use their mail as a stud. I mean, it's it's almost impossible to find. So if you have one, then congratulations. That's very good that, you know, you don't have to go out and commit to buying a sire right out of the gate. But most people do. A, um, housing a sire, you know, is a whole different, um, has a whole different set of kind of guidelines that you um, want to go by and they, they, just, they just tend to cost a little bit more money when you're housing a sire. So, um, that again, that's another podcast. So um, you're probably going to end up buying your own sire and your own queen. Okay, once you get your cats, then you have DNA testing and any health screenings that is um, suggested for your breed for each cat. 
So, you know, before you decide to mate them, uh, before they become of age um, or of, you know, the age that is acceptable to you to breed the cat, then you'll, you know, you'll want to have these things in place, your DNA testing done and all of your health screenings. And that costs money. I'm putting an average cost on that upwards of about $750 to $1,000 per cat, depending on what's required in your particular breed. So again, it's all going to require some research on your part to know exactly what you're looking at in that category. All right, then we have all of the normal expenses that pretty much anybody is going to have when they own a cat. As breeders, I think we tend to go a little bit more on the high quality side when we're choosing these types of things because we have more than one cat, you know, we have multi-cat environments. We want the best nutrition, the best products, the best of everything for our cats because they are our pride and joy and we're using them to reproduce a particular breed. So your cost, your expenses for each cat is going to include food, litter, toys, cat trees, scratching posts, food and water bowls and dishes, your vet visits, your regular health exams, your grooming costs, and any meds that that cat might need. And I'm estimating that with all of these things, food, litter, toys, trees, scratching posts, food and water bowls, vet visits, meds, and grooming at about $2,000 per cat per year, or at least for the first year. Because of course, some of these things are, you know, one-time purchases. Well, actually, like scratching posts and cat trees, I tend to get rid of those and replace them about once a year. So um, that's just me. That's not everybody. And that expense, you know, could be kind of high. I'm, I might be going high on here. I'd rather kind of shoot you high than to come in low and you're, you know, not prepared for a real expense. And things aren't getting less expensive. They're getting more expensive. For example, a 10 pound bag of cat food when I started was $24. Now it's almost $50. So the cost of cat food has doubled. And that really happened during the pandemic when everything was kind of you know hard to get and there was a food shortage and especially in pet food, like everything was out and they couldn't make the tops for cat food cans and you know the brands were hard to get and some of those brands never made it back to the shelves like the one I was using for example I had to find a new cat food so the cost of all of these things definitely increased over the last few years and I don't really see any time in the future where they're going to go down so the cost of these items are just going to continue to rise and then um, let's kind of touch on building out space because if you have a sire and you have a queen and they are living in your house, let's say for an example, which is quite common, um, you know, you don't want to mate your female every time she goes into heat and you probably don't want to mate her when she starts going into heat as a young kitten. You know, they can start going into heat at around six or seven months old and the male, he doesn't care how old she is. So he'll want to mate with her no matter what. And if it's if they're living in a home together as your pets, then it's going to be quite difficult to keep the male away from that female cat. So typically the male is going to need his own space, um, his stud space. And however you decide to do that and you know have a comfortable space for him to live is probably going to cost money because you're going to have to build out the space or use a bedroom which means he needs all of his own stuff he needs his own cat tree his own food bowls his own scratching post his own food his own litter his own toys you know all of that stuff has to be bought again because he's living in his own space so when i started my cattery i decided before i ever bought a cat um, that i did not want a male living in the house i was just so terrified that he was going to spray, which is highly likely, I just did not want to take the chance. So I have like cat urine phobia. I just do not want my house to smell like cats at all. So I just didn't want to take the chance. I went ahead and bought 
um, actually already had a building that my husband was using as an eBay store. He was storing all of his items in this um, this little little shed slash barn that we had finished with insulation, AC, floors, walls, you know, everything. It was completely finished. It was an eBay store at first, and then we converted it into a home office. We are also, in, both of us, in the real estate business. And then we decided to let the cats have that space. So he actually made um, a closed in one of the sides, or he didn't close it in. He made a separation wall so that the males would have their own side and the females would have their own side, and they were not not able to physically interact with each other. And that has worked out tremendously like it's the perfect setup for me and for them and to finish that building out was about fifteen thousand dollars that was to do everything run electrical to it insulate drywall flooring walls lighting ac heat the enclosures the decks cat flap so they could come in and out you know just everything that the cats would need in there their cat trees their climbing shelves they have an attic with beds up there you know it's just fully decked out for the cats so i kind of went over the top with that but that was an expense for me so you can whether you're going from you know just using a bedroom to an actual cattery it's going to cost money in some fashion it's going to cost you know a little extra expense and then when your queens are ready to deliver her kittens, she needs her own space. She needs a little birthing area, and you have to buy that. And you need the supplies for um, helping her deliver her kittens. And there's a checklist for that in our um, Complete Guide to Breeding Pedigree Cats, if you're not sure what you need as far as supply lists. And then something to contain the kittens in. So they'll stay in the birthing tent for about three weeks then they can get out and they're just not at an age yet where you want them roaming free in a bedroom or in your home they're not potty trained yet and they're just not safe they can get caught up in very small spaces so you need a little something to contain your kittens usually a little playpen or a tent that's you know 36 inches high or there's clearly loved pets little you know kind of little playpen things that are clear you can see in there and those cost money And then when you have kittens, the expenses that go along with them, they need their own toys, their own beds, their own travel carriers. You got to do health checks, vaccines, and spay and neuter your kittens. So typically the expense per kitten um, out of a litter is probably between $700 to $800. And I'm kind of just guessing on the cost of that to feed them, litter them, get their health exams, their vaccines, and spay and neuter. So it really just depends on the cost in your area, and that is per kitten. So that kind of covers what I could think of as far as expenses. Now, if you show your cats, um, which I don't because I absolutely detest the thought of showing my cats, I've done it. Um, I've, I've talked about this in previous podcasts, and I literally probably will never step another foot inside a show hall again. I just don't like it. It's not for me. And there's nothing that says that I have to show my cats. So for me, showing my cats is not an expense, but it certainly is for um, a lot of people. So showing cats is expensive also. You have to register your cats for the show, which is about $150 depending on the location. So that's not really the expensive part. It's traveling because your city doesn't typically have, um, you know, shows regularly in your location. So if you're trying to accomplish a championship title or or more or take it further, you know, you have to travel sometimes. Um, yet maybe in the same state, but you still have to travel, spend the night, spend money on hotels, you know, buy grooming supplies, etc. So, you know, that can be a little bit expensive to be in the show class um, of breeders. So all of these are expenses that, you know, you have to consider. And the only reason I'm doing this podcast about expenses is that people in our group, our Facebook group, which is called the No Judgment Zone Pedigree Cat Breeder Community on Facebook, I see people that run into an issue with their cat, usually a medical issue, 
or a loss of litter and they're devastated they don't know how to recover you know they've spent all of their money on buying cats um, expecting for some of that to be recuperated with a litter and that litter never happens so you know it kind of inspired me to do a podcast about how much it really cost to start this to you know become a pedigree cat breeder and buy all the things that you need to without making any shortcuts because I mean you can't shortcut most of these things but it's definitely you know going to come out of your pocket so let's talk about the other category which is budgeting and reserves so I always keep at least five to ten thousand dollars in reserves in cash all the time no matter what if I didn't have that I would be a nervous wreck because you need it you absolutely are going to need budget and reserves for several reasons number one is emergency vet bills or just vet bills in general you never expect them you don't know they're coming and they're expensive i'm not talking about your typical i've got diarrhea i'm going to the vet that's a 150 dollars visit we're talking about emergency c-sections emergency spays pyometra treatment and other things that can come up that you're just not expecting entropion surgery i had that happen that was very expensive you know one of my um, queens who delivered kittens three days later she got a really bad uterine infection it was not pyometra it was um something else i can't think of the name of it i mentioned it in my pyometra podcast but um it was on the weekend and i had to take her to the emergency room and that they had to do an emergency spay she was she was sick and that um bill that cost me about $3,800. And, you know, luckily I had my budget in reserve, so it did not impact me. Like, you know, I wasn't devastated by that because I'm ready for it. And you should be ready for it too. You should always be ready to for something unexpected to come up and it's going to cost you money. That could also be having a cat that's pregnant um, and she loses her whole whole litter losing it meaning before she ever delivers or she delivers her kittens and none of them make it and if you were counting on that to help you recover from the initial expense and that happens that could devastate you and that's not a good thing that's not the way to prepare because it certainly can happen it certainly can happen. So I do want you to be ready and have reserves for that in case something like that happens. And honestly, you can have cats that you've paid $5,000 for. You've done the DNA testing. You've done the health screening. You've bought food, litter, toys, trees, scratching posts, food and water, vet visits, medicine, grooming, uh, built out space, bought birthing boxes, supplements supplies toys beds and that cat never has any kittens at all it just is not a producer what happens then is you have to spay or neuter the cat without the whole expense that you made on this cat is a total loss that is quite common as well so regardless of what your contract says or what you expect from a breeder sometimes You take a total loss on these breeding cats and it's really just part of breeding. So you can't be mad at anybody. You can't be upset with yourself or with the breeder. It's just nature and sometimes they just don't work out. And so you have to accept the loss and be prepared for that and move on in your journey to another cat. So out of your budget and reserves, you buy another cat you buy your replacement cat because one of the things you know if you're really passionate about it um, that you don't want to happen is that you do all of this setting up and and preparing and buying your cats and um, having expectations and then something happens and your cats don't work out and you have to you know 
um, spay and neuter and find a pet home or keep them as a pet and then you're busted and you you know can't pursue what you want to do because of money so it's very expensive to get started it's very expensive to sustain so as long as you are aware of that and you're able to take care of your cats like you need to to keep them in top condition and have them living in a a wonderful environment and provide them with the things that they need to be excellent breeders um, then you will be okay you know you just don't want to suffer financially by not being ready for the reality of expenses when it comes to breeding pedigree cats. So hopefully this offered you some insight on what you can expect. Again, my numbers are, are, um, I'm just kind of throwing them off the hip. I actually have a spreadsheet um, that breaks it down a whole lot more and it includes um, other things like registrations of litters and keeping your registration membership with your club active, which really are nominal fees. Um, It just includes everything and kind of gives you the cost per kitten. It's a cool spreadsheet. It's in the Complete Guide to Breeding Pedigree Cats course, which is online. You move at your own pace. Um, It's a great foundational class, online class for new cat breeders. So you can check that out. It's the expenses of owning a cat is the um, lesson on that. So until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and make good choices. We'll see you later.